Racing, episode number 227. Francis Bavier or not? <laughs> Two Chairs No Waiting is brought to you each week by the fine folks over at weaversdepartmentstore.com. Drop by over at Weavers, pick up some wonderful Mayberry items, all kinds of great things over there. You definitely want to check them out, so head over to weaversdepartmentstore.com. Two Chairs No Waiting is also brought to you by donations from listeners just like you. The executive producer of Two Chairs No Waiting, episode number 227, is my friend Kenneth Junkin, Otis Campbell, our Otis Campbell impersonator. Thank you, Kenneth. Hey, we want to thank you uh, for supporting the show. I want to thank all you guys that are here listening for uh, supporting the show by just being here. Because I know that takes a lot of effort and a lot out of your day and time. So I definitely want to just, again, thank you for being with me here in Mayberry. Let's spend a little bit of time having some fun. Well, folks, this week, Francis Bavier or not. All right. So the last several weeks on the Internet, uh, probably a month or more, I have been fighting a rumor. Because there's an email that comes out that so many people have gotten, and maybe you're one of them as a Mayberry fan. You may have seen it, or you may have seen it on Facebook or somewhere. And hopefully it's died off if it's now years later, and this podcast served its purpose, and we were able to kill this rumor off and stop this horrible rumor. But let uh, let me go through this with you. What we've been seeing is an email that comes to you, and it comes and says, you'll never in a million years guess who this is. It's one of those kind of emails, you know, it says, guess who, when you're supposed to scroll down as you go, you know, so you scroll down the page, it goes, guess who, I bet you can't guess who this blonde beauty is, and you keep scrolling, and it says, you know, look closely and try to guess before scrolling down to find the answer, after you guess, give up, you can, or you can give up, or whatever, scroll down below to see the photo, so there's this photo of this uh, very attractive blonde lady, uh, in a chair with her left leg uh, out to the side and her hands. On it. And it's a black and white photo. And it's obviously from uh, sometime in the 60s or earlier. And the dre- the uh, the outfit she's wearing is a swimsuit, I believe, of some kind. And, you know, so it's, a, it's kind of a, a swimsuit, kind of a publicity-looking photo of something. So the, the idea on this email that keeps coming out is guess who this woman is. And then as you scroll on down the page, and it tells you that it was probably taken around 1940. Uh, but then it says it's Francis Bavier, better known as Aunt B on the Andy Griffith Show. Well, let me just tell you uh, for sure, folks, that is not Francis Bavier. Now, I know I've, I've been into arguments. I've actually had email. Well, arguments are just maybe a little strong. <laughs> but I've actually had to, uh, you know, say, look, it, you're wrong about who that is. And people have just had a hard time believing me when I would tell them that. But uh, but I, I promise you that is not Aunt B. I'll play a little Aunt B music for you. I did a lot of research on the Internet. And if you go to our our podcast episode for tonight, it'll be episode number 227. If you go to Two Chairs No Waiting and episode number 227 of our podcast, Two Chairs No Waiting, there'll be a link that'll take you to our Facebook page. And our Facebook fan page has uh, is going to have an uh, album that's going to have all these pictures in it. Okay, so we'll be able to see all the pictures of what I'm talking about. So you'll, you're not missing out on anything. If you watch the video podcast, I'll be showing them on there for us. But if you're on the uh, if you're on the audio, just head over to our fa- our page, and you can go to the you can go to the Facebook page for Two Chairs No Waiting, where I'll have all these pictures. Now, let me show you or uh, tell you again the picture that we're talking about is out on the internet, and wow, it's just been everywhere. And I keep trying to tell people this is not Francis. Now, let me give some idea why I know, because I, I did a lot of research and I went out and found two more pictures of the exact same photo shoot, the same photo shoot, because the lady is wearing the same clothes. You know, it's obviously the same lady. There's two, two more pictures of it. So there's at least three I've been able to find. And 
I was able to determine, at least from what the uh, records are saying to me, is that these were taken of Gloria de Haven. It's D E H E A V A N, Haven. De Haven. And the, that's who the pictures are of. And you can definitely go and, and see those pictures. Uh, if you go to the Facebook page and click on any of the links, what I have done on the Facebook page uh, with the, the album pictures is I have the actual link of the website I found the picture at. So you'll be able to go to those and see the actual link and determine for yourself. These are supposedly from about 1949 of Glory to Haven. And it's D-E-H-A-V-E-N. Let me go ahead and turn down that music because it's not Aunt B. And they're from Glory to Haven and from 1949 and from their publicity stills, supposedly, of uh, the movie, Yes, Sir, That's My Baby. Now, I watched that movie because I was able to find it on YouTube. I actually could find that. And so I watched it. I didn't see any scene in that movie where she was dressed like this, but you could definitely tell the lady on the movie, Glory to Haven, was the lady in this picture. You could definitely tell. Now, as part of that, as I said, I found three different shots uh, of this lady in the same outfit. The good thing about this is I was trying to prove it wasn't Francis. So I was actually able to find a photo of her from 19... Uh, 20 from around the 1920s and I found it at the New York Public Library so it's a digital uh, digital gallery and it's a 1920 uh, photo of her as a young lady and it was taken by photographer George Millard Kesslier I'm sure I didn't say that right but he was a photographer and they actually have this on, on record there in the New York Public Library for the perform, Performing Arts. So if you're ever in the New York City area, I bet you can go in there and actually see the actual photo of, uh, of Francis. Now, this is a very young picture. I had not, I'd never seen a picture of her that, uh, at that age. And so I was able to actually go and find that. Uh, something you definitely want to go see. So go over to our Facebook page at facebook.com slash two chairs and you can go and see it. Now, I know this is not translating really good for an audio podcast, but folks, this has been driving me crazy. I keep trying to have, I've been emailing people saying that's not Francis. Here's the links. And then I've had people write me back and going, yes, it is. Look at her eyes. It's definitely her. <laughs> I'm going, uh, okay, but what evidence do you have besides her eyes that that's actually Francis? And uh, so far, none. Now, like I said, I did find the picture from the public library that is Francis, and you can definitely tell it's her as a younger lady. I believe that's probably her. I have an older picture of her and the younger picture as well. And you can kind of see the resemblance, especially if we go back to some other pictures that we have of Francis that uh, she was younger in. You can see uh, the resemblance between the picture that's probably from the 1930s and the picture from the 1920s. You can definitely see the resemblance. And all these photos are at facebook.com slash two chairs. Look for the gallery in the, in the photo gallery, or the, the album, I should say, for episode 227, which would be, it's TCNW227, and it'll say from Francis, uh, Francis Bavier or not. And you'll be able to see those pictures. So you can see the younger photos of Francis, uh, from the probably around the 30s to maybe the 40s or so. And you can also see the one from the 20s. And then there's obviously a picture of her as Aunt B as well. And you can compare those pictures with the ones of the lady uh, that's being purported to be Aunt B all over the Internet. Now, what I want you to do, if you have time, Tell people when you see that email, that's not Francis. If they post it on Facebook, send them a link to my website, to the to the Two Chairs No Waiting Facebook page, or to that album, or to this podcast, so that anybody that's interested would be able to determine that this is not her. I don't know how this got started, and I've consulted with Jim Clark. He, he was actually the one that told me, no, that's Gloria DeHaven or heaven, however you say her name, glory to heaven. Uh, 
you know, he's the one that told me that that was her. And I did some research and sure enough, there it was. So folks, again, I don't want to berate this forever, but this is really because I run the imaberry.com uh, website and I'm involved with the imaberry community and I do this podcast, I have gotten untold numbers of this <laughs> email telling me you'll never guess who this is. And I'm going, it's not her. So anyway, don't want to just keep hammering this home, but I just want to ask your help to get out there and spread the truth. Don't let people believe that this is uh, Frances when it's not. Uh, you know, she's Frances was a lovely lady herself. There's no reason to to be spreading that this uh, that Gloria is her. So anyway, all right. So that uh, that horse is now beat to death on this podcast. That I do need your help as listeners. Get out there and spread the word, spread the love. <laughs> Make sure they all know that it's not her. All right. So I've got a couple of voicemails that I want to pay, uh, play for you here. Uh, the first one is from, uh, let's see, who's this one from? Bob uh, Bob Bass, I do believe is his name. And so we're going to hear from him first. So, uh, Bob, go ahead and take it away. Wait a minute. you got to turn his volume up. Let's go try that again, Bob. Hey, Alan, this is there Bob is. Bass up in Titty UPA. I wanted to comment on your episode 224. I'm just getting around to viewing it and uh, I like the little clip you you put in towards the end there I, I want to tell you I had to look two times I thought, <laughs> I thought it was a real real and I mean uh, I thought it was a real Floyd and Barney it my god you guys did a terrific job uh, it was really I, I watched it three times uh, great job Alan keep up the good work I, I really truly enjoy the uh, podcast and um, we go to Mayberry usually every year. I missed you down there this year. I don't definitely do not know how, but we were very busy. But I'll be back next year. Uh, you take care. Keep up the good work. Thank you so much. <laughs> well, thank you, Bob. Hey, I, I'm glad you enjoyed that. That was a lot of fun for us. David and I uh, always enjoy doing Barney and Floyd together. Uh, and that was just a really fun thing. I, I, I'm glad you enjoyed being able to see that. Now, for folks on the uh, audio podcast, you heard it. Uh, if you'll remember, it was uh, Barney and Floyd talking uh, about the guy that was getting out of school. Uh, here's just a short little hey, Marty, bit of it. Hey, look here. Chip Blanton, he's getting yeah, that, out of school. That was it. Oh, how long yeah. has he been in? Yeah. 35 years. Hmm? So, 30, 35 years. So uh, he had seen the video version of that, which was on episode, I believe he said, uh, 224, it was, about Ernest Borgnine talks about George Lindsay. So if you didn't see that, you can go to that uh, video podcast that should be on the page. You just go to twochairsnowaiting.com, go to episode number 224, scroll down the page, and you'll see the YouTube video there. You can go to about 11 minutes and a half or something like that. That's about when I believe this starts, somewhere in that time frame. So uh, I want to thank you again, Bob. Thank you for taking time to call in. Uh, really appreciate it. And I'm glad that you enjoyed uh, <laughs> enjoyed the clip. Now we got another call coming in here from uh, John Lane, a fellow podcaster in the Andy Griffith Show. He's doing the Gooper Says Hey podcast. And here's what John had to say. Hey, Alan, this is uh, John Lane. I got a few, two questions for you. Uh, my first one is, uh, what time period was uh, was Mayberry set in? Because I was wondering if stuff was really that cheap in re in other places in the 1960s that it is in Mayberry. Because stuff seems really cheap, but I don't really know. So I wanted to ask you that. Uh, second question is, um, I was watching your, uh, I was listening to your public domain episode. And that was like two, 207th episode or 206, and um, and you were saying how public domain episodes they uh, they go into. Uh, Public public domain, you know, after so many years, and I was wondering if they're in public domain, then how come the theme song is so bad? I mean, like, what, I mean, isn't it just recording an episode of the Ingrid Show like off your TV or something? I mean, how would that make the theme song so bad? Isn't I mean, isn't it really public domain just <laughs> recording an episode of the Ingrid Show off of what you're watching, you know, off the TV or off, you know, off the off Netflix or some or somewhere on the uh, internet? I was wondering why that is. So I appreciate and I appreciate a. Uh, all you doing in, keep it up. Talk All to you later. Right. All Bye. right. Thank you, John. Thank you. Now, <laughs> he's right. 
these they're really bad. So what he's talking about is uh, public domain episodes. Now that was episode number uh, two hundred seven of the Two Chairs No Waiting podcast. You can go back and listen to that. But the the uh, let's say let me get to the first question he asked was what time period was Mayberry set in? Well, the Andy Griffith Show is actually set in the nineteen sixties, but the actual feel of the show is from the nineteen. 19- 40s probably in that time frame because that's when Andy was growing up in town so it, the actual town of Mayberry when you look at the look and feel of it is from the 40s now as far as cost of things uh, that's about right the cost of things on the Andy Griffith show is about right for the 60s things were very cheap John uh, boy I, I wasn't al- I was alive in the 60s but I didn't have money in the 60s <laughs> so I couldn't tell you how cheap everything was, but I do have a thing uh, somewhere telling what the cost of things were when I was born. You know, like a loaf of bread was, you know, a a dime or 50 or 15 cents or something. Everything was really cheap. Uh, That's called inflation. And it's been several years, 40 some odd, you know, 50 since uh since that time so the prices have definitely gone up so that so the time frame and the money uh, for the 60s is about right things costing about what they did so but it but the show the look and feel of the show was really set in earlier time frame than that probably the late 40s 50s that time frame now your other question is why is the music so bad on the public domain episodes well the public domain episodes uh there were 16 episodes of the Andy Griffith show that fell into public domain. That was just a paperwork error. And the folks at Viacom Paramount, whoever it was that was in charge of that didn't fill out the paperwork on 16 episodes. It was probably a stack and they were stacking them. They were doing them and they did some and, and accidentally stacked 16 sheets of paper with other sheets of paper and didn't realize they didn't fill out the correct information. So those episodes, and now that's speculation, but those episodes then fell into public domain. Now, what we ended up with was some great things like this. Now, this is actually a pretty good one, and this one's from, uh, it's called, uh, this was what they used as a theme song for the Andy Griffith Show. On some public domain episodes called from TV Favorites. This one's actually pretty good. So while Andy and Opie were walking down the road, that's what you heard. Now, this other one is the dreaded Sterling Entertainment Group version of the oh, Andy Griffith theme. Now, this one uh, makes me cringe every time I hear it. Let's go ahead and... Oh, my goodness. And it was on the Sterling Entertainment. Oh, you could buy these as DVDs. Video tapes at the time, I believe, as well. Uh, can you imagine Andy and Obi walking down this walking down the road listening with that playing? Oh man, you're expecting to hear, you know, the Andy Griffith show theme, you know. You're wanting to hear that, and the next thing you hear uh, instead of that is is this. Oh. <laughs> Okay, that's enough. That's enough. Oh, that's enough to make you cringe and just want to not watch the episode, honestly, isn't it? Because does it not? It doesn't even put you in the mood. Uh, for me, like our podcast episode, Two Chairs, boy, if it doesn't start with that, just gets me ready to go. And if the Andy Griffith show doesn't start like that, ah, uh, you know, it's just not right when it starts like this. To me, that sounds like Thomas the Tank Engine's coming on, or something like that, you know. It was a wonderful day at Thomas. You know, I don't know. It just doesn't sound like the Andy Griffith Show. Anyway, the music is horrible. Now, why? Why is the music horrible? While the episodes have to be renewed every so many years because of the kind of work they are in art, in the, in the arts and entertainment business, the art of video or, audio or you know, film is different than music so the copyright expires differently the copyright for the andy griffith show theme didn't expire but the but the copyright for the film did expire 
So these places that were trying to sell DVDs that had, or, or audio tapes, I'm not a videotapes, I mean, that had the episode of the Andy Griffith show on it that was in public domain, couldn't legally use the theme music, the Andy Griffith show theme, without paying royalties because it was still under copyright. So since they didn't want to pay royalties, they replaced the theme with, let's play this other one, with stuff like this. And at least these guys kind of got something that's kind of kind of mellow, Mayberry-ish. Uh, but, you know, they didn't want to pay Earl Hagen, uh, the, uh, the writer, composer, and performer here of, the, of this. They didn't want to pay him. So that's why they ended up with this horrible music. Now, why is the music so bad? My guess is because it was real cheap. <laughs> they didn't have to pay hardly anything for that because it's just kind of, da, 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 da. you know, it's probably free. Somebody just gave that to you. It's probably, I don't know. Anyway, that's why, John, and I'm sure everybody's bored and ready to get out of here now because who wants to hear any more of that theme? <laughs> so, folks, I'd love to hear from you. If you'll give me a call at 888-684-8415, I'd love to hear from you. That's what John did. That's what Bob did. I want to thank them for calling in both. And you can also email me at floyd at imaybury.com. Drop over at twochairsnowaiting.com and leave a comment on any of the episodes. I'll see those, too, and comment with you. And, uh, you know, drop by our Facebook page at facebook.com slash twochairs. Any of those ways, I would love to hear from you. And get out there and tell people, that's not Francis Bavier. Do that for me, please. We'll see you guys next week on Two Chairs No Waiting. Good night, everybody.